Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you all so much for being here. This truly is a historic and transformational moment for the Kansas City Public Schools, um, our students, and actually our community at large. Last night, our school board approved three critical measures that will shape the future of our district. Updates to our 10-year capital plan, the general obligation bond ballot language for April 2025, and then a new memorandum of understanding agreements with nine local charter schools. And some of those leaders are here today, and I thank you all for being present. These decisions propel our district forward in creating safe, modern, and inspiring learning environments that our students deserve. It's been 57 years since Kansas City voters last approved a bond funding our schools and during that time, our facilities have faced decades of unmet needs. Nearly all of our schools require urgent repairs from outdated HVAC systems to aging plumbing, roofs, and learning environments. But this is about more than just buildings. This is about an investment in our children and an investment that's not made for a very long time. Every Kansas City student deserves a learning environment that supports their academic, social, and emotional needs. The time for action is now. A $474 million bond costing less than 64 cents a day for the average homeowner will address urgent needs while building modern features to enhance education. These funds will support all of Kansas City's children, both district and charter. This vision was built with input from over 6,000 community members, parents, staff, and other partners who helped shape our comprehensive $680 million 10-year capital plan. Together, we've created a responsible roadmap that prioritizes urgent needs and sets a bold vision for Kansas City. Some of the key projects include district-wide upgrades to HVAC systems, plumbing, roofing, and other deferred maintenance. Also a new middle school in the Southern Corridor to support the sixth through eighth grade model. Two empowerment centers. Each includes a pre-K center, an elementary school, and then also a family resource center to provide support for those families in those communities. State-of-the-art career and technical education center that will be located right here at Central High School. Improved spaces for learning environments, classroom renovations, advanced tech steam labs, outdoor learning and play in areas. Also improving our musical and fine art spaces. That's one of the priorities in our district. And then also upgrading our gym and athletic facilities. Safety and security also has to be paramount. So that will also be included in this bond effort including our alarm systems, secure entry points in all of our schools, as well as ADA accessibility. This plan isn't just ambitious, it is responsible. By consolidating resources and taking older facilities offline, we will save $300 million and then be able to reinvest those funds directly into our student success. KCPS is already seeing progress. We have rising enrollment, higher graduation rates, and academic improvements. But to, but to sustain this momentum, our facilities must also reflect the excellence that is happening inside of our classrooms. This is a community effort and we need your support to make this vision a reality. I invite you to learn more, to advocate for our schools, and to help ensure the future that our students deserve. Thank you for standing with KCPS and for helping us build a brighter future for every child in Kansas City. At this time, I would like to invite our mayor, Quentin Lucas, who is here with us today. We thank you for being here to share a few thoughts about how this work benefits the city of Kansas City. Thank you so much. I won't, I won't mess with the microphone too much. Make sure it's all working. How's everybody doing this morning? Are y'all doing all right? It is good to be with you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Superintendent. Bonjour, sir. Uh, it is good to be with every one of you. Today is a transformative day in education in Kansas City, but also for Kansas City broadly. Every city's success has four pillars, investment, infrastructure, education, and safety. 
And we often in Kansas City get to talk about a lot of the other pillars. We talk about investment all the time, and I'm proud of it. Yesterday we were celebrating new developments downtown. We talk about a plaza. We talk about all these other things that are, are part of a great Kansas City. We talk about infrastructure all the time. When I was on city council, we put on the ballot a general obligation bond that was in excess of $800 million. It was approved by about a 70% yes vote by voters throughout Kansas City. And in the years since, what we've seen are flood control projects. It's how we pay to resurface all these roads. It was vital and important. Today is our day to talk about education, which we have drastically underfunded for years. Today is a day that we make sure that our children get the best quality facilities and allow for the best quality educational experience of anyone in our region. And I say this from experience. As the mayor of Kansas City, I have the fortune of being the mayor who gets to interact with 14 different school districts, parochial, private, charter schools, and I love each one the same, don't get me wrong. They just like children, love them all. But when I go to a debate tournament, at least some at North High School, and walk around, when I go to a basketball game at an almost brand new Staley High School in North Kansas City District, I commend all of them for those investments. And this is our opportunity for all of us, myself included, who live in the boundaries of the Kansas City Public Schools, to step up and to say we're going to do right for our children and our community. And why does it matter? Because our kids matter. We have been investing, by the way, in investments and in infrastructure for years. We have been building new fancy buildings downtown for years. We have been building and improving roads for years. What we have not been doing is improving our schools to this level for years. What we have not been doing is collaborating at the level that we are seeing right now. So I thought it was important to be here today. It's important for the mayor, for the city to say that we stand with you. We stand with Kansas City Public Schools. We both proudly have Kansas City in our name. Indeed, Kansas City is the only name our institutions have ever known. And what we will always be about is building a better future for our young people, is investing and is sharing the story of how great our children are and how great future generations will be with these investments. Now, I know we will have lots of questions, and I look forward to hitting the campaign trail with a whole bunch of folks along the way. But a generation, actually, I'm a little older than that, a generation and a half ago, I was one of the many thousands of Kansas Cityans who lived in the boundaries of this district but didn't go to these schools. What we built the opportunity for today is an outstanding and exceptional education environment for every child, for my children, for all of your children, so that we can proudly say, that we are excited to buy a house, to build a career, to live a life in the KCPS district, we can proudly say that Kansas City is a city that is firing on all cylinders. And more than anything, we can proudly say that every child, no matter their corner of Kansas City, no matter their family income, no matter where they live, how they live, has the best in education and has the best facilities in our region. I thank the KCPS Board of Directors for giving us this opportunity. God bless you for that. I thank the superintendent and the administration for truly believing and supporting what Kansas City is all about. And what I want to say finally to wrap up is this. We talk a lot about being a world-class city, a World Cup city. I'm excited to have the eyes of the world here in two years. I'm excited to have World Cup games played in the Kansas City Public School District. But what we will not do is have the world here showing up and saying what a great place you have and everybody drives by a school that's not in the shape that it needs to be. What we will not do is say that we will invest tens of millions of dollars in facilities for games, good games, exceptional games, but not invest in our children. And so what we have the opportunity to do, each and every one of us, is make a difference. Every summer, I have people in our community, and a lot more happened this summer, who said, what can I do to get involved? What can I do to help our community? What can I do to help address public safety? It's very easy. Vote yes in April. Vote yes for our kids. Vote yes for our schools. Vote yes for a safe, stable, and exceptional future for all of Kansas City. Thank you, much. Thank you so much, Superintendent. I look forward to joining you all on the trail in the months ahead. Thank you, Mayor Lucas and Dr. Collier for those inspiring words. At this time, I'm going to bring up the Vice Chair of the School Board, Ms. Tanisha Ford.
Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. I am Tanisha Ford, currently serving as the Vice Chair of Kansas City Public Schools. It is my privilege to be here today with my other board colleagues who are in the audience. And I wanted to take a moment to, to acknowledge our board president, Ms. Rita Cortez, who was unable to be here with us today. It is my privilege to stand alongside my colleagues today and express our unwavering support for Kansas City Public Schools and share in the excitement of, for what, a li what lies ahead. I also want to acknowledge the efforts of previous boards that did a lot of our work for us to be here experiencing this moment as well. KCPS is making incredible strides academically. These gains are a testament to the hard work of our students, educators, and leadership, as well as the support of our community. We are witnessing a renewed energy in our schools and a commitment to excellence that inspires us all. It is exciting to, to experience and honor, we, and honor the fact that we are not the Kansas City Public Schools of 25 years ago. The time is now to further invest in Kansas City Public Schools. The school board stands shoulder to shoulder with the KCPS administration as we work together to advance the district's vision. We are proud to support the 10-year capital funding plan, a bold forward-thinking initiative that is designed to modernize our schools and create spaces where innovative and learning can flourish. This plan isn't just about buildings. It is about building opportunities for our students and strengthening the foundation of our community. We commend the administration for crafting a comprehensive and inclusive plan that's grounded in research and shaped by community feedback. With over 120 engagement sessions and participation from more than 5,700 individuals, this plan does reflect the voices, the hopes, and the aspirations of Kansas City. It is truly a collective effort, and we are grateful for the collaboration that brought this plan to life. As a board, we are steadfast in our dedication to the students and families of Kansas City Public Schools. Our focus remains on ensuring that every student has access to safe, dynamic, and inspiring learning environments by investing in our schools. Don't know what happened, but I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> we are investing in the future leaders of Kansas City and the time is now. This is a pivotal moment for Kansas City. We encourage everyone to stand with KCPS as we work to turn this vision into reality. Together, we can create a brighter future for our children, our schools, and our entire community. Thank you for the continued partnership, your belief in our schools, and your commitment to our shared success. Let's keep working together to build a stronger Kansas City public school district because when KCPS thrives, Kansas City thrives. And the time to further invest in Kansas City public schools is absolutely right now. Thank you. resolve in Kansas City Public Schools if you didn't tell. And because we are not on this journey by ourselves, we are also partaking in this journey with our local charter leaders. Um, we want to invite Michelle Markman from Academy Lafayette's board. She is their president to come up and also share a few words. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Well, it's going to go great. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be great. Um, so, all right, it's not, is it, oh, here we go, yay. Yeah. Okay, wow, okay. Um, so as board chair um, of Academy Lafayette Public Charter Schools, um, as a parent, um, as a taxpayer, as a proud citizen of Kansas City, as a business owner who will employ, um, who employs currently actually um, public school um, graduates and who will employ the future students of Kansas City, um, I'm just really thrilled to celebrate this moment of collaboration and unity um, where KCPS and charter schools have come together with a shared vision. Um, it's really, truly a groundbreaking partnership. 
um, all of these schools, public and charter alike, educate the children of Kansas City. Um, and they do this together. And our students truly do deserve a strong, supportive, and unified educational community. The future of our city, as mentioned uh, before, it rests in the hands of those being educated today. And they deserve nothing less than the best that we can offer. Um, they deserve modern, equitable facilities that empower their learning. They deserve facilities that enhance athletics and arts. They deserve a community that believes in their potential and is ready to invest in their success. And they deserve this bond. Um, for us, this bond is more than bricks and mortar. It's a statement of who we are as a city. It's an opportunity for every Kansas City resident to shape a brighter future for every child regardless of which school they attend. And that's critically important. Um, we're fortunate to have leaders, um, the leaders that we do, leaders like Dr. Collier, leaders like Dr. Bang from Academy Lafayette, um, the many other charter leaders, the many other board members that have come together for a shared cause. Answer. All right. <laughs> um, but their collaboration is truly a testament of what can happen when we put the children first. Um, today, I think Kansas City becomes a shining example for the nation that we're a city that values unity over division, collaboration over competition, and progress over stagnation. So congratulations to everyone who made this possible. I know that for the charter schools, for our parents currently, for our alumni who are voters, <laughs> voting age for their parents um, you've got a really strong coalition to to join KCPS in in helping um, make this bond happen so let this be the start of even greater things for our students and for our city thank you thank you so much thank you all for coming today um, to close this out I think it makes sense to hand it back over to the person that set the vision for this entire plan, and that is our superintendent, Dr. Collier. Thank you again um, to all who spoke this, this morning. Um, this is really a huge moment for our city. It, I think we'll probably all look back one day and just be amazed at um, what we did together and what this means for the future of Kansas City. And so I thank everyone also who's in, in the space, in the room with us today, um, just for taking the time to be here. Uh, Kansas City Public Schools, we are a district that's on the rise. As you all heard, we are, we've made a lot of great achievements, um, but I'm looking forward to the ways that we'll be able to work um, even more collaboratively in the future um, with our charter schools and charter leaders. And um, I just can't stress enough um, my appreciation for their willingness to come on this journey with us. Um, we, uh, we all know that historically, um, the district and charters have been viewed as being in competition with one another. But I feel like as we start this journey, we're moving to a place where we'll be working collaboratively to support all children in our community because they all belong to us. And as all are supported, as all buildings are improved, as all environments are improved, the, city, the children in this city have a better opportunity of thriving and being successful. And that means success for Kansas City. So with that, I'm gonna close out um, my remarks. Once again, thanking everyone. Um, and I will open up now for questions from our media who's here with us today. I'm gonna to assume that one of the arguments that you'll make uh, besides the educational uh, ones is our, our arguments that this, uh, if, if this were to pass, that it makes Kansas City as a city better. Um, you touched on it a little bit, but I wonder what would be two or three of the points you would make Absolutely. So um, I always think about the experiences of our children and how those experiences impact them. One of the things that I do regularly is go to all of our um, secondary schools, our high schools, and I talk with our students. I have town halls and I hear from them about what their experiences are day to day. And one of the things that I've heard consistently is that when our, our children, our students are going to other buildings, and we heard this earlier, going to other buildings for competitions, that they're walking into those spaces and they are impressed with what they're seeing, but they always come back with the question, why don't our facilities look that way? 
And I think sometimes we send unintentional messages to children. We can say we care about them. We can say you're worthy, you have value, but it's really our actions that, that really sends the true message. And I think that when our students see that this city, city is willing to invest in them the same way that their peers all across this region in this country are being invested in, they'll, they'll know that this city really believes in them. So it, it does impact um, the way they see themselves and to know that they have a community surrounding them that's supporting them. But also another critical area that I hear about a lot and I've gotten lots of questions about um, when there's violence that's happening in the city, people reach out to Dr. Collier, come and talk to us about what you think about the violence that's happening. I'm happy to do that. But I also want to know that folks are willing to invest in our children. And I've told people many places that I've gone that we can either invest in them on the front end Let's be proactive about it, or we can wait and react to it, and the outcomes are not what we want them to be. And it not only impacts the children, but it impacts the entire city. And so I believe that as we make an investment in our children today, we are preventing some, some negative things that could happen down the road. Because our children know, number one, that we believe in them, and then we're providing access to resources and opportunities that the children in this community so much need and deserve. Oh, our students have been very vocal about the improvements that they want to see. They have a long wish list. Um, they, they talk about, um, I think, bathrooms. We hear bathrooms, bathrooms, bathrooms. But uh, in addition to that, and that's been common across almost every building, um, but we also hear about their athletic spaces um, that they're not able to utilize because they're not in, in the condition that they should be in or they're not the right size. Um, we hear uh, also about their cafeteria. Um, their classroom spaces, hallways, we hear about it all and they are happy to tell us. We hear about the elevators. I was in a couple buildings where they complained about the elevators and I rode on the elevator and I understood why they complained about the elevators. Um, but when you've gone that long without making a capital in, uh, uh, capital investments, um, those are the conditions that you're going to live with. And I would really um, love to invite folks to come into our buildings and actually see for yourselves what our children are navigating in. And I would say our children are resilient. Despite that, our children are achieving. They are doing some remarkable things. And so once again, we've heard this theme, the time is now for us to make an investment in them. Superintendent, can I add something to his question Absolutely. real quick? And, and she handled, this is to the question of why is this good for the city? And just brass tacks, I think the public safety answer was exceptional. There are, are two issues we face in Kansas City government a lot. Kansas City, Missouri, south of the river, continues to lose 1,000 people per year in population. It has been consistent for any number of years. Supporting our public school district, making sure that we can have improved buildings, improved neighborhoods, frankly, more people moving into our neighborhoods, is a key part of funding all of the needs and the resources of this community. That's one. A second area is in workforce. This morning, I was at a union hall. The US Secretary of Labor is in Kansas City this morning. Everybody around the country is spending time figuring out how do we have enough workers to fill the trades? How do we not have enough workers for health care in any number of areas? As you dig into the priorities of this bond, this allows us to actually fund more training, more interactive training in those areas that can build the workforce for Kansas City's future. That would mean that we have a construction industry that's vibrant. That means that we're able to actually fill a lot of the healthcare needs that we have for the next generation. So if you are somebody who cares about our physical infrastructure in the city and frankly having enough residents to fund it, you should vote for this. If you're somebody who cares about having enough people who work at the hospitals or who work at any of the businesses in this city, you can fund it. Even if you never think a lick about education, all of those things are important parts of the future of Kansas City. And if we don't address them today, those problems will just exacerbate more and more as the years go by. Last night, the presentation said that it would cost the average homeowner within KCPS limits about $230 a year. I know you kind of just touched on this, but how would you further justify it to people who live within those limits that don't have students in the school district? Well, I don't think you necessarily have to have students in the school district to care um, and want to make this investment. We heard some really important points um, just now for why we would, why taxpayers would want to do that. Um, but I think, um, 
you know, in, in the coming months and years, we're going to see all kind of initi initiatives on ballots and people are going to vote yes for them. I don't know that we want to move forward voting yes for all these other things and then say no to education. And then to say that we want things to improve um, in education and we want things to improve in our city. So I, I think because we've not come to the voters in, in this long, I think once again, now's the time for us to make this investment. And yes, it may be a sacrifice, but I think there are gonna be many sacrifices made um, over the next months and years. And people are gonna say yes to those things. I think people have to decide that this matters to them, that this is important. And they have to understand why this is important to the children in this community, but why it also is important to the community, the success of our community at large. Well, I'm believing that, um, that there's an opportunity to reach and connect with every person in our community. Um, I never start from the place that um, there's a group that um, is going to say no. And that might be the reality, but I always start with the belief that if we have a chance to sit down and talk and, and be able to share the concerns, to be able to share what our needs are, um, that we have a great opportunity to bring folks on board. I believe that Kansas City is a caring community and many people do believe in our children and many people want to see our schools be successful. So, so I think given the opportunity to connect with uh, all areas of the community, and that's our priority, we don't want any corner of this community missed. We want an opportunity to sit down with everyone to answer questions, to help talk through things, and also make, make sure that, that we are, are including those voices in this vision. I think doing that, we'll be able to bring a lot of people on board who may have question marks at this time, and that's okay if they have question marks. We are happy to answer them, and we are happy to move forward together with them in this process. What is there to do between now and the vote in April? Oh, there's a lot of work to be done between now and April, and so there's going to be a lot of engagement happening. We've done a lot already, um, but we're getting ready to gear up and uh, put it on turbo blast. Um, <laughs> once again, just connecting with everyone that we can, um, community meetings, um, small coffees, whatever we need to do. We have some a lot that's planned, and Nicole probably can go more in detail on all of those things, but um, there's a lot that we'll be doing to connect and to get our message out, to let people know um, what we're asking, but also for them to know um, the great things that are happening in Kansas City Public Schools. I think our vice chair said it well, that we are not the district of 20 and 30 years ago. And for whatever reason, people like to bring up the past and they want to ball and chain us to the past. But I I'll tell you, we're breaking those chains. We're moving forward. We are a new Kansas City Public Schools. And so we can't wait to continue to tell that story, to share the great things that our students are doing. I see students in, in the room right now, um, some of them actually served on um, our steering committee and other things, and their voices are important in this process. I want our community to have an opportunity to hear them firsthand around their experiences, what their needs are, and so we're looking forward to this as we move forward. Is that a challenging message to get across that this is not the district from a while back? It is a very challenging message um, to, to get out, but it's, but it's not insurmountable. Um, we're going to just have to make extra effort to continue to tell our story and to tell it in places that is typically has not been heard. And so that is um, that will be our challenge ahead. How do we reach areas of the community that, that historically maybe we weren't able to to reach in the past? But we're going to um, have a very targeted and intentional effort around doing that. And once again, I think I believe the best in people. I believe that people hearing our story, understanding who we are today, what we're trying to achieve and why we're trying to achieve it, will come on board and will support. Do you have time for maybe one more question? Can I add yes, that? please do. We have others here, so I definitely want to include Just their voices. I, I think to your question, another thing is this collaboration and this partnership with the charters shows that this is not KCPS of 25 years ago. Um, it allows us, and, and each charter, got, okay, here we go, um, each charter did submit what they would use the funds for, and so it allows us, and you know, I'll speak on behalf of Academy Lafayette, but allows us to do that substantial work to our building. 
and allows us to, um, to provide our public school students with improved facilities. So there's been very specific things identified um, that will allow, you know, for educational needs, for arts needs, for um, athletic needs, and that's what we're looking forward to. So we just talked about people moving outside of Kansas City um, and, you know, enrollment, whatever. But, like, building two new schools is a pretty big deal. What is the purpose of those two new schools? Well, one piece of great news is that our enrollment actually has increased the last three years. Um, so much so that we actually originally had in this plan the closure of an elementary school. We actually took that off of the list as we really evaluated um, the influx of students that we've had, particularly at the elementary level. Um, and so um, as we as we go through this process, we are looking at our current enrollment, but also that enrollment trend of, 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 in, of increase. Um, when we think about King Elementary, that new bill, that is um, that will be a school that will be moved back into the community that they uh, once uh, went to school in about, about 2015. That building closed, the old King building closed and they were moved to Kansas City Middle School of the Arts. But they were told at that time that they would have an opportunity to move back into their neighborhood. So um, one of the first things we wanted to do in this process is to um, keep that promise. Um, we were reminded that that was a promise that was made. So we are keeping the promise that was made from back in 2015. And we're moving those students um, into their own neighborhood again, in, into a brand new um, facility. Um, but we, we have looked really closely at our enrollment, making sure one of the priorities of this is not to um, expand seats. And so that's something that we've worked not to do. Um, but we're looking at our current enrollment and our enrollment trend um, that is helping us make the, those decisions that we are making. In elementary right now, we, um, we are, we're doing really well in enrollment. Uh, 